All right, so let's really check out rates of change and velocity and look at acceleration and all kinds of like really cool things here. So we're going to sum it all up with one big physics problem, a baby physics problem, not a hard one. Like if you want a really hard physics problem, go get an AP physics. I, I don't know what goes on in there half the time, but some of these things that we're going to talk about you will use. Um, so a dynamite blast propels a heavy rock straight up with a launch velocity of 160 feet per second. It reaches a height of s equals 160t minus 16t squared after t seconds. So what they've given us right off the bat here is the position function. Do you see it right here? Here's my position. Bam, right there. So the first question is how high does the rock go? Okay, how high does the rock go? Well, let's just run through a real quick, rough, super rough sketch and see if maybe calculus won't help us to solve this. So here we've got this rock. Dynamite blows it up. It follows an upside down parabola and it does like this. So what I'm interested in is this point right here. This is my maximum height. Where does that happen? It happens when you have a horizontal asymptote. And how do you have that horizontal asymptote? When your slope is equal to zero. And how do you find where your slope is equal to zero? Take the derivative of the position function, set it equal to zero, find the time. So this problem, which looked really nasty to start with, how high does the rock go? We're just looking for a horizontal tangent line. So S prime is going to be equal to 160 minus 32t. And that's going to be the equation to find the slope of any tangent line for this graph. I'm really interested in where my tangent line has a slope of zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a zero in here and I'm going to solve this guy out. Equals 160 minus 32t. Sorry about the change in color. Get it back to the right one. So what do I do? I simply subtract 32 from both sides. And, and then divide both sides by that 32. So t is equal to 160 over 32. And if I double check that with my calculator, that's going to be 5 seconds. Okay. In 5 seconds, that's when I get that horizontal tangent line or my maximum height. How cool is that? You couldn't do that in pre-calculus, and that's why this is fun. Okay, so what is the velocity and speed of the rock when it's 256 feet above the ground on the way up and on the way down? So again, now we're wanting to know, okay, if we go back up here to this graph, I want to know when is my height equal to 256 feet up and down. So I'm going to take my position equation, 160, t minus 16t squared equals 256 because that's the question where does my position equal 256 feet above and I'm going to move everything to the right because as I work with this equation I like to have a positive leading coefficient and that leading coefficient in this case is this guy right here so when I move him over when I move him over to the right what I end up with is 16t squared minus 160t plus 256 equals zero. And if I want to find uh, how long it takes for the rock to get up to that height, what I have to do is actually solve this out for t. Now, this problem actually foils out, and that's really, really great for us. But if it didn't, you could use the quadratic formula to solve it out. Um, first off though, you can pull out a 16 from all three pieces, so that's going to give you a t squared uh, minus 10t, and then 256 divided by uh, 16 is 16. And we can actually divide both sides by 16 so that it goes away. 0 divided by anything is 0, so that leaves me with t squared minus 10t plus 16 equals 0. And then when this factors, I'll come over one more time, when this factors, 
we're going to just set whatever we get our factors to equal to zero. So what times what is 16 that adds up to, and we know it adds because of this guy right here, that adds up to negative 10. So it's got to be minus 8, minus 2. And so you set those guys equal to 0. And these are the two times that you get. It's going to be 2 and 8. So when is the speed of, you know, when it, what is the velocity and speed of the rock when it is 256 feet above the ground on the way up and on the way down? Well, that's at times of 8 and 2. So what do I do to finish this problem off? I come back over here to my equation for derivative. Let's just go ahead and write it again uh, real bold where we can all see it. The derivative is 160 minus 32t. Okay, so once I get that part, then I just need to stick in 8 and 2 for t and do my math. So I've got a little bit of space right here, so I'm going to do both of these right up here. So what I'm looking at is um, the velocity function at 8. And remember, s prime is velocity with respect to time. So the velocity at 8 seconds. So what is the velocity at 8 seconds? Well, it's 160 minus 32 times 8. And uh, when I do that math, I end up with um, negative 96 feet per second. And I'm cheating. I'm looking at my calculator over here off to the side. And then how do I find my velocity at 2? I just simply stick 2 into my m for t. And when you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get 96 feet per second. So I have to use my derivative to uh, figure out what my instantaneous velocity is. But I've got to use some of my algebra, too, to figure out at what values of, of t I'm particularly interested in. Well, what is the acceleration of the rocket at any time during its flight? Remember that we start with position. We start with position, which is 160t minus 16t squared. Then we go to velocity, which is the derivative of position, which is 160 minus 32t. Then we go to acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of position, which is going to be negative 32. And ne negative 32 what? Well, the correct units on this are going to be feet per second squared, or per second per second, as some of you guys have may may say. So this has a, a an acceleration that's continually slowing it down. Um, it is not speeding up at all. So when does the rock hit the ground? Well, that's a really good question. The rock hits the ground at the two places that it crosses the x-axis. So we're back to that original function then. We just need to set 160t minus 16t squared equal to zero. So what I would take is I want to know where my position is equal to zero because that's where we're hitting the ground. And you'll notice there's a t in both places here, so I'm just going to factor a t out. And, and then we set both terms equal to zero, so t equals zero. Well, we knew that. We had to launch the rock from the ground with the dynamite anyway. And the other part, then, is 160 minus 16t equals zero. Well, what do you get here? You're going to end up with 160 equals 16t. So when t equals 10 seconds, uh, you're going to cross back over and hit the ground. And I'm just double checking on my calculator here. And that's what it is, 0 and 10. So a really, really involved problem. Don't hesitate that if you have a question on something with this particular problem that you note it and write it down um, and tweet me or ask. Um, also, if you, uh, you know, may need to rewind a couple parts a couple times. There's a lot going on in this problem, but it's a really, really good problem, okay?